to welcome him once again. I haven't seen him in a long time. Let's check if he has grown any hair since we last saw him. Good evening, Miguel. <laughs> Erwin, that will be the day. I see we all go to the same bar. We're all upside, upside down rasters, you know? <laughs> you, know? Uh, you know what? More people need to come to our side. You know? I want, I want. Well, it's overrated. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> good evening, my friend. Uh, Ira, good evening to you, Erwin, and uh, Ira, good evening to our distinguished listeners wherever in the world you're tuning in from. We thank you. My name is Miguel Anthony Melbourne. This week on Melbourne Motivation, I'm excited to introduce to you a young leader who is transforming his experience into a blueprint for the next generation. Let me go ahead and tell you a bit more about him. Adrian Sutherland. Adrian is a change agent and sports and entertainment marketer. He has spent over a decade building his reputation as brand strategy expert, leading social and digital rooted marketing campaigns for top tier global entities such as TikTok, Unilever, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and the New York Knicks. However, Sutherland's life purpose is built on a passion for helping others unlock their greatest potential and youth empowerment via education, leadership, and social impact. He believes there's a collective responsibility within the Black community to sow into the futures we would like to see by investing time and resources into the youth communities present today. So Sutherland's personal investment spans programs such as New York Cares, Laureus Sport for Good Leadership Council, NYC, and his nonprofit organization, Minority Voices Prosper, also known as MVP. And with that, Adrian King, thanks for taking a moment to join us today. How how you feeling? Blessings, blessings, blessings. First and foremost, appreciate you holding space, creating the space. Erwin as well, thank you guys for having me. And, you know, just, just excited to be here with you guys. Because again, you know, the world needs these types of conversations. So I'm glad that I've been blessed to, 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 to join this conversation with you guys. So blessings on that. Absolutely, absolutely, man. It, it's, it's a pleasure to be speaking to you. Excited for the diaspora here. Just a bit more about you and, and what you're doing in the community. But, but Adrian, actually, here's where I want to start. You're a Brooklynite, right? And so I want to get your take. Typically, every year in Brooklyn, we get a chance to celebrate our Caribbean roots through the West Indian Day Parade. It did not happen this year, right? And so well, here's where I want to start. Just tell us a bit about your love for your Jamaican heritage and, and why you felt not getting a chance to celebrate this epic, epic, epic event. Well, listen, um, my whole family's Jamaican, right? And the fact we didn't have a West Indian Day Parade this year, it's a, it's a it's a it's a distinguished uh, tragedy because let me tell you why every other parade every other celebration heritage celebration happened right so what about the West Indian Day parade why was that the only one to not get its shine right so I'll tell you what because I grew up in a whole Caribbean background my whole family's Jamaican like I said and it's just an opportunity for us West Indian folks to really embrace our culture. You know what I'm saying? It's for us to embrace our culture. It's for us to, to, to dance. You know, dancing is a way of, of life for us when it comes to the West Indian people. So the fact we didn't get an opportunity to really, really embrace that this year, you know, and granted last year was a whole COVID pandemic. So we understand that. But when you look at this year and you say to yourself, okay, what about this year? And then you see everything else happening happen around that. You say, uh-uh. We need some answers, but um, you know, hopefully next year that that comes back, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's 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 something we miss. It's one of those things that I think they said almost like two million people tune in. This is a big opportunity for us to elevate who we are as a culture and a Caribbean culture. So, uh, fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Here's what I want to go next. You know, through your hard work and perseverance, you've built an exemplary career in marketing. Can you give us some insight into your work and detail for us any lessons you've pulled from your experience in corporate working across, you know, these great companies and, and brands that, that we've listed? Wow, good question. So I guess it's it's going to take some background, right? Because like I said, um, you know, I've started my career at a, at a pivotal point where I've worked for brands like Unilever, um, Coca-Cola, Anheuser-Busch, TikTok, the Knicks, right? Born and raised New Yorker, working for the New York Knicks. So that's a that's a that's a goal right there in itself, right? Um, but the one thing I can tell you is that 
coming from a Caribbean household, coming from a Jamaican family, education was the number one thing, right? Education was the number one thing. So in order for you to progress in life, it was always pushed forth that you have to be on top of your books, right? So in being on top of your books, it allowed me to almost navigate my own career with some ownership. You get what I'm saying? Because as, as you're growing, as you're a youngster, you know, it's it's on your family, right? Your family's the one really pushing the narrative on education and, and getting a job and things like that. But as you get older, the, the foundations of that, you start to pick it up yourself. So I wanted to ultimately create a career that I'd be happy with around sports marketing because I've always been somebody dedicated and played basketball my whole life as well. So for me to work for those caliber of brands, it just gave me an opportunity to almost represent and also just commend right commend the generations prior to us that I almost laid the foundation and it's almost like payback you get what i'm saying that's the that's the way the career for me was really built it was saying how can i be a, my own success story that my family can be proud of that they can say you know what adrian did something with with his life that he had on this world but at the same time i think one thing that i've learned is that my success isn't tied to my career you get what i'm saying my success isn't tied to my mm -hmm. career and being able to work for all these respective brands and being able to work for the Knicks, I realized that, you know what, this is all great, but it's truly about what are you doing to make a difference, right? You can mm -hmm. do all this thing for, for self clout, but it's what are you doing to make a difference in the community? And I started to realize that a big passion of mine was speaking to the younger people, speaking to the younger people mm -hmm. about the opportunities that they have and sharing perspective on what success could look like. Because again, like I said, success isn't tied to your career. Success is truly, truly tied to the difference that you are making in the world. Mm. And I think that's a that's that's something that we're all invested in if we find a moment to actually produce within it. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. You, you know, you touched on something that it's a running theme having these conversations with young Caribbeans that uh, are doing things in, in the community. That theme is using your education as fuel to create opportunities in the future. But what I'm seeing is that, you know, you guys, are, you're not stopping there. You're looking back and say, how do we pass the baton to the younger generation? This is powerful stuff. And, you know, as you mentioned that, you, you know, you're looking to make a mark in the world. This is something you've pulled from your experience. So I want to talk about MVP. Minority Voices Prosper. Tell us more about this organization that you founded and created. You know, you know, what is the gap you are looking to fill and for who? Right. So it, it goes back to what we we're just talking about. Right. Trying to make a difference in the world. And I think one thing that everyone that's listening can understand is that we we can't do it all. Right. We can't do it all. But at the same time, we are blessed with gifts. Right. We are blessed with gifts to make a difference, but you have to find out what that gift ultimately is. So for me, when I started thinking about MVP, Minority Voices Prosper, I started saying to myself, OK, I navigated a lot. Right. I navigated a lot to get to where I am career wise and in where I am from a, from a world perspective. But not everybody knows the ins and outs of that. Right. I always tell people perspective is the greatest equalizer. So in order for us to make a difference, we have to share that perspective because sometimes we only know one navigational route. But if someone can know that in order to get to where you want to get to, there's actually five different lanes to get to that. I thought it was important that I carve that space out because, again, the whole purpose of Minority Voices Prosper was to expose youth minorities to accomplishment and achievement up close from people that look like them and sound like them because I realized there was a gap. There was a gap that our young people don't get the tangible opportunity to see someone that's directly their pigmentation that can look at them and say that's a success right sometimes what they only see is the person that's on the basketball court shooting hoops right the person that's holding the mic right they don't understand the dynamics of how you can actually be a part of such career without holding those particular um positions but i wanted to change the dynamic of that and bring forth people across music, fashion, sports, and show them what success looks like and show them how relatable it can be. And that's where I always say perspective is the greatest equalizer, and that's where the, the gap I wanted to step into. You know, you're saying some really powerful stuff, and it actually takes me back to my senior year of high school. I found my first mentor, and what struck me is the way he looked, man. He just so nice, how eloquent he spoke. 
And he's been my mentor since I was a, a senior in high school. So the mission that you're on to expose youth, you know, to folks who are accomplished that look like and sound like them, it's extremely powerful, man. And I must say, I'm looking forward to continuing our conversations offline because what we're doing with Path with a Purpose and what you're doing, I'm already seeing and feeling a whole lot of synergy. Uh, but, but with that, Adrian, this is what I want to do, you know, dig in into your experience and passion for empowering the next generation of leaders, you know, what words of encouragement would you like to leave with the youth that's listening right now? Be patient with your path. Not everybody's path is going to be the same, right? You might have someone to the left of you that are going to obtain their goals just off of a straight path forward. You might have the person to the right of you that's going to accomplish everything that they wanted to and your road might actually be quite bumpy. You get what I'm saying? Your, your road might be a, a maze within itself, but I could tell you that just from experience, that if you have patient with patience with how you're going about that, everything will reveal itself. All your goals will be accomplished, but you can't get caught up in what everyone else is doing. You can't get caught up in the easy fixes. And it goes back to what I mentioned before. Success isn't tied to a career. Success isn't tied to money. Success isn't tied to the fancy car. Success is tied to happiness, right? So if you can understand yeah. the dynamics of those two things, that's where I think everyone can start to make a headway in terms of what their future ultimately looks like. And that's what I want to leave with our young people, just off experience. Success isn't tied to a career or money or anything of that caliber. Success is tied to your happiness. And just be patient with yourself as you navigate to find that success within yourself. Powerful stuff, Adrian, man. I, I appreciate you. And we know if there's one thing that our Caribbean cultures, all of them produce, it's happiness. And so, man, I want to just say thank you. Thank you for taking this time. You are a change maker. Uh, thank you for sharing this meaningful conversation on Melbourne Motivation. Can you please tell our listening audience about where we can connect, support, and follow your movement? Absolutely. Listen, um, you know, you can connect with me via social media. Um, you can connect with me, Adrian Sutherland underscore. So it's A D R I A N S U T H E R L A N D underscore on Instagram. Um, you can also check us out with our nonprofit as well, Minority Voices Prosper, minorityvoicesprosper.org. Um, would love for, to connect with anyone, um, anyone that's looking to make a difference, anyone that wants to collaborate. Let's do this together because again, it's not going to take a solo mission. It's not a solo mission. It will never be a solo mission. It's going to take a collect a collective vision, right? A collaboration effort. And that's why I'm looking forward to just moving the culture forward. And I know that's going to take a village. So let's tap in together and figure out how we can do this. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you, King. I continue to do the good work, man. Uh, Irwin. Yes, boss. So, so Adrian, what parish are you carrying tonight? Listen, listen, I don't take no ownership. <laughs> no, man, what part should your, your family come from? Come um, on. But they all, my, my whole family, though, from Kingston. Right, right. Kingston. All right. Yeah. We'll give you a pass on that one. Yeah, we'll give you a pass on that one. I, I, just, I just went to go pick up some, some rice and peas earlier, so everything good. <laughs> it is critical. It is critical. Of course, success is tied to happiness. And of course, it's very important that we take that lesson from what we've heard tonight. Want to want to just say thank you very much for what you keep doing, my friend, and keep being the light for our youngsters in this world. All right, one love. So, yes, so Miguel, um, how, how do people get in contact with you now? And not 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 to find not to find out who your barber is, you know, but how do they get in contact? With you? That, that is a very good premise, Erwin, because I, I have no advice to share there. But what I can tell the listening audience is that my personal and professional goals are to help the youth be best prepared for college so that we can have some more Adrians out there. So visit pathwithapurposenyc.com. Use the code IRIE, I-R-I-E, for when you are purchasing our college study flashcards. Follow Melbourne Motivation on Facebook on Instagram, subscribe to YouTube. You'll be able to watch this interview and all the other ones. And so until next time, I say, please be safe, live with big energy. Erwin, we connect again next week. One love, my friend. All the best to you, gentlemen. Good night and stay safe. Blessings. Much love.